your health is worth whatever it takes to get it. Testing one, two, three, gotta test that and see how well it sounds. Pine nuts, it's where it's at for sure. Love them, so good. So good, mm, mm. so good, I got you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hi! I'm getting ready to make lunch and I thought this would be a great time to just talk and share a little bit about my health journey. For those of you that are new to the focus on optimal health, sometimes it can be overwhelming, majorly confusing. In fact, sorry I dropped some lettuce. I'm gonna rinse off my lettuce. I'm gonna get right back. I love green lettuce. I actually love the majority of lettuces and sometimes I can't decide what I want. And you know, I even love iceberg and I know they tell us not to eat it and I think that's baloney. I think there's some kind of conspiracy behind that. I'm gonna rinse this. I can't really decide what I want on my salad today. It's like, do I want sweet? Do I want savory? So we'll just see how it goes. Nothing really planned out here. I'm just gonna go with my heart. Back to optimal health. When I first started on this journey, I had health issues. And as I started learning and reading books, I found myself incredibly overwhelmed because it was so different from the way I had lived my life. Or maybe not even different from the way I live my life, but because I had not been taught the reasons why we did what we did. And then as a teenager, I got away from really the healthy food as I was on my way to school and I would go through the Hardee's drive-through and get a sausage biscuit and Coke, which I am horrified that that was even a thing, but man, did that become addicting. This became my journey on the diet roller coaster. Growing up, I was incredibly active in so many different aspects. Ate healthy, I was always thin, never struggled with weight, until I became a teenager and I started hanging around some people that sat around, talked on the phone, ate completely different than the way that I was raised. And I started doing what they were doing. And unfortunately, as I look back, my focus was on the wrong thing because it wasn't, hey, how am I gonna be healthy? It was, how am I going to be thin? And so I would reach for anything that would make claims to make me thin. Several different diets. I went to what was called the bariatric clinic near us and they put me on, I say legalized speed and I had shots of B12 in my bahonkas. A lot of people that don't know me, they have no clue that I have been overweight. And if I had some before and after pictures, I would share them, but I have to go over to my mom's and kind of dig through her stuff. Most of them I just burned. Later in life, when I started having some health issues and I started reading the books and learning, I realized that there was a direct connection between being the weight that God designed you to be and nutrition. You know, our bodies are equipped with hormones and when they function properly, those hormones literally tell us when we're hungry and they tell us when we're full, but they only work properly when we are eating properly. We have got to be covering the rainbow. We have got to be getting every nutrient necessary for our bodies to be able to behave. And that's what mine wasn't doing as I would be eating the fudge from the lunchroom and picking up the biscuits and sausage and eating McDonald's and doing all the things that everybody else was doing. And I just thought that exercising myself to death and calorie restriction was going to get me where I needed to go. And it really just got me frustrated because I was bored. Back then I hated working out. And so as I got older, fortunately, I learned a better way. And I just feel like the Lord stepped in and put the right people in my path to teach me what I know today and what I am teaching others. Because at 53 years old, I, I feel good. And I know that I'm the weight that God designed me to be. I don't have to step on a scale to know that. You feel it. It's a feeling you just know. It is tied to the way that I eat and what I do throughout the day. So I wanted to talk about that today and just share some stuff with you. I'm not gonna dig too deep, but I am not an all or nothing type of a person. What I have found is that will get you stuck more than anything else. So if that is you, 
then you need to take the steps to get out of that all or nothing mentality. And it is a journey all on its own as I have clients come to me and they continue on this vicious cycle because they are all or nothing. So we have to learn those principles to know how to operate. But my point is that we have got to notice what it is, those triggers that are keeping us stuck and heal from there. So a lot of times we do have to deal with our past, maybe the way someone talked to us, treated us, maybe some emotional abuse some things like that in order to be able to overcome and quit the madness. We want to get off this all or nothing roller coaster and I am not a teetotaler and it is freeing. To be an all or nothing is bondage because if our step is in one step in the wrong direction, bam, like we're just triggered and a lot of times we tap out. Progress is what matters. Two steps forward, one step back is still progress. But when it's all or nothing, step off the path, we just give up and so then it's five steps back and two steps forward that's not progress the way that i navigate through life first of all and stay thin is i eat when i'm hungry and i stop when i'm full we have a hormone called ghrelin that tells our body that it's hungry and we have a hormone called leptin that tells our body that we are full so in order to be able to live by that eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full those things have to be functioning properly so exercise and mental clarity and healthy food all help that. We also want to shut down cravings and the truth is we are what we eat. So if you're eating bad food, your body craves bad food and that means that there's going to be an uncomfortable period of time where you have to do things different so that we're heading in a different direction. So if we wanna start craving the food that we need, this is how we can do it. We tell ourselves, this is only a short period of time. You just start doing it. A lot of times, if we will partner that with things along the way that are gonna help keep us on track, when I say it's not what we do some of the time that matters, it's what we do all the time. So if you start getting these negative patterns back into your life, and then you start having cravings and you start heading and giving into it and heading in that direction you can kind of end up in a mess and then you have to backtrack and so I have been there and as I'm backtracking I will listen to some podcasts to help me stay on track I will watch videos from creators that are doing it well and it's very um, colorful and the food that they are showing makes you excited to eat it. And so as I'm looking at someone playing out their meal plan, and I'm like, I can totally do this because I want this food in my life. This food is beautiful, and I know it's gonna give me energy, it's gonna make me feel better, and it's gonna get me back on track. So we've gotta have safeguards in place to help us when we're not there mentally. It can be a struggle because the body is really good at getting what it wants. Food can tend to do that to us as well. It can be that powerful. So restaurants and fillers, emulsifiers, um, excitotoxins, things that have been put into our food purposefully to keep us addicted to it. We have to remove that from our lives. We have to eat things like this much more often so that we crave the good stuff. Uh, another thing that as I do this journey that I think talking about this helps to make someone more apt to know it's doable. Again, it's not what we do some of the time that matters, it's what we do all the time that matters. So if you are constantly eating healthy food, it's not gonna matter if you have that one evening where you go out to eat and you just choose whatever you want. That's not gonna be a problem. And so see, we're not sitting here in this very restrictive box. It's not too hard to navigate through life when you keep that in mind. So if I go and I visit a friend and I'm staying with them and they don't eat the same way that I do, I don't have to make them feel uncomfortable by bringing my own food or opting out of what they're serving because that is some of the time. 
So when I go hang out with friends, which most of my friends fortunately are on the same page, and when I go visit, I come home and I, I didn't even get into my 20%, which is such a blessing, and that's why you definitely wanna make sure that you have your posse and you have your people because it's going to make life so much easier to navigate, but we don't have to flush out the people that don't. We just do it less. So you go and stay with that friend. You don't make them feel weird. You know, we don't want that on us. As believers, we want to be a blessing. And if I show up and that person is already nervous that I'm not gonna eat what they have in their home or they're gonna eat at a different time, you know, all these things, then it kind of causes a little bit of dissension and I don't want that so take it off the table because it's not what we do some of the time that matters and so you can go and be a blessing to your friend you go home and you get right back on track and that's how I do it another thing is exercise has to be a part of your life and I used to hate exercise so it was always a downer I would do it because of my goal and then I realized and this was what really was the pivotal point for me, was realizing, and I'm gonna get teary-eyed, I'm sorry, was realizing that exercise is a privilege that we get to do. The fact that we can move our body daily in all of these ways that help to trigger healthy dopamine, epinephrine, serotonin, hormones, you know, all of these things, that's a privilege and I do not want to take anything for granted and so I move my body every day now I'm the type of person not everybody is like me in fact probably most people aren't but I'm the type of person that gets bored easy so I mix it up and I will literally go into my workout room and I will turn on a 30 minute video and I'll start doing it and I'll get bored, but I leave the video on because it's a time frame, and I'll start doing something else. I'll pick up my hula hoop. I will start doing some handstands. I will do a different weight train. So maybe I was doing my arms and I'll just switch to my lower body or I'll you know, plug in a mobility or a stretch sesh. And the point is I'm still getting my 30 minutes or maybe I'm cranking up my favorite dance song ever and I'm just doing a little, you know. You've got to do you, but don't let the monotony or a certain type of workout keep you from doing it. Guys, there's so many different things you can do. There's no excuse for anyone. It's just a matter of plugging in what you will enjoy and showing up. So I've talked about it before. Like, it's not an option. So I know I'm doing it. I show up. I don't feel like it. I can give a cat cow. I can do a down dog and then boom, the switch flips. But if I didn't show up, I wouldn't have given the switch time to flip. And if all I did was 10 down dogs, some up dogs, and some mobility stretches, it's better than if I didn't show up at all. This is how we do it. And I'll tell you so far what I have in this salad. I have green leaf, pepitas, pine nuts, and celery and all of these are super nutritionally impactful giving different components so that we're covering everything that we need healthy fats protein roughage antioxidants anti-inflammatory all those things fiber which is so important and the majority of people that come through my program when they come in that's the first thing we have to address is fiber needs because they are clearly not getting enough fiber and they can't poop. And just so you know, if you are constipated or if you are experiencing diarrhea, they are both constipation just on the opposite sides of the spectrum. Constipation is we can't eliminate. Diarrhea, we're not getting a full elimination. We want to make sure exercise is helping, nutrients is helping, movement, you know, moving our body physically, doing those twists in yoga. And that's what I was talking about, like when you're moving your body. And that's why I love the hula hoop. So I'm doing the hula hoop action. That hula hoop action, you gotta make sure you go the other way too. You gotta get both sides. 
that hula hoop action is twisting and moving the digestive tract. And so there's so much more to all of these different workout modalities than just a muscle. It's organs, it's digestion, and just really amping it up. And I feel like when we are educated and we know what to do, it's empowering because it makes us more apt to do it. And so that's kind of what this conversation is about today is I just wanna kind of get light bulbs to go on, help to motivate you to want to live your best life and I know that's kind of cliche because we hear it all the time. You know, I'm actually not doing this because I'm heading in a different direction. Joy. First of all, joy comes from the Lord and that comes from being in his word. But science has proven, you can read scientific studies that people that are reading God's word, that are worshiping the Lord, that are spending time in prayer are overall happier people. Now we have people that say they're doing that, but I'm talking about people that are actually really doing it. So that's another thing that just really helps to drive us in the right direction. Everything that we do that has that positive effect that helps us to feel happy, gets us motivated to continue in the right direction. So as we're talking about direction and I'm changing directions with the salad, I've decided to go a little sweet. And so I'm gonna put some grapes on here. These grapes I got from Trader Joe's because they have had the most delicious organic grapes lately. I find that so many times I buy grapes, which are so good for you if they're organic, and they don't taste good. And so when they do, and when they are in season, I'm all in. So I'm just gonna give those a little chop chop and throw them on my salad because this is gonna be delicious and I am nourishing my body and this is helping with hormone function, your nervous system. And another thing um, that is very important that we need to evaluate is, are we getting into the parasympathetic nervous system? So you have this glorious nervous system that is kind of a branch in two parts, and that is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. They're both much needed, but digestion and rest happen in the parasympathetic nervous system. And if we are busy and we are not breathing properly and we are stressed and we've got too much going on and we don't take the time to stop, then we're stuck in that sympathetic nervous system. And did you know that your body cannot digest food properly unless it has had time to shift? So I think this is why it kind of was designed to Sit down as a family, pray over your meal because it really helps you to focus and give thanks and gratitude, helping us to shift into that parasympathetic nervous system. And as we are spending time away from our phones and distraction, we're having this healthy conversation with our family, we're laughing, we're enjoying delicious food together. It puts us into that optimal system for digestion. And this is why you don't want to eat right before you go to bed, because when you do, your body is digesting food instead of resting. It's working. So before we go to bed, we wanna shift into that parasympathetic nervous system so that we have a really good night's sleep. I'm gonna go ahead and put some apple on here. It is true that an apple, we've all heard it, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And there's a lot of truth to that because an apple has so much to offer us in that nutritional profile and it helps us to digest our food properly and it is full of fiber and antioxidants. I, I probably do get an apple a day unless they're out of season and then I'm just really bummed. But I will have an apple, actually last night I had, that was my dessert. I have to show you this because a friend of mine um, sent me home with this and typically what I will do with my apple is I will spread almond butter on the apple and I will sprinkle some cacao nibs or if I'm heading in a different direction, I will sprinkle some raisins depending on what I feel like that night. And I might do peanut butter, it just depends on what I have. But my friend sent me home with this. 
This is a cashew cacao spread, and oh my gosh. So it's delicious, and it's sweetened with coconut sugar, which I'm gonna duplicate this because I'm gonna make it with sucanat, which is just as healthy, but until I finish this jar, I'm not gonna do that. So anyways, it's got cashews and cacao, so super good for you, and I made apple sandwiches. And then I slather it, put my cacao nibs, and it's so delicious, doing so many good things for my body. And that's the thing that you can learn if you are new to this journey. Real healthy food tastes amazing. People, when they come to me, they're so overwhelmed, they're almost scared, and I've been there, so I get it, because they're like, oh my gosh, in order to get healthy, I'm never gonna be able to enjoy food again. It's never gonna taste as good. I'm gonna miss out on all of this stuff. And that's not true at all. You just have to learn what to do and how to do it. And it is so much better. Not only does it taste better, it has more flavor. Once you get those toxins out of your life, and a lot of times you have to detox to get yourself unhooked. And then the food that God made tastes so much better than anything that you were doing that you're actually happy, but sometimes it does take a shift and I totally get it. The healthy food, which nourishes our body and keeps us the weight that God designed us to be and gives us energy and gives us peace and happiness, it is the best and is so worth whatever it takes to get there. Health, your health is worth whatever it takes to get it what that might mean for you. Maybe you need to hire a health coach and you can reach out to me, but a health coach can help motivate you, educate you. It can help to break down barriers. We can also help to clear the way, to clear the confusion so that you know that what you're going to do is going to work. Also by getting those videos in your life, podcasts, reading books, that are going to help reshape your mind and help you to enjoy the journey and it not seem so overwhelming. I hope this makes sense. I hope that that brings understanding onto what this video was actually all about. Just a little tool to put in your toolbox and hopefully you have gotten some takeaways. I am going to top this salad with some amazing, delicious olive oil and balsamic vinegar from my favorite place, Palmetto Olive Oil. I am not sponsored. I don't make any money off of these products. I just love the owner. I love the education I have been given from what is in this bottle, top notch. And I have some videos about olive oil specifically and what you should be looking for because we want it to be an asset. Many olive oils in the grocery store aren't. That's the story for the video that I'll attach below. So delicious and tantalizing. These are the kind of things that make this salad exciting. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and please leave some comments because I really want this platform to be a place where we share information so that as other people are watching and maybe they are struggling with staying on this bus, they can read some comments and get some encouragement. Thank you guys so much. If you'll do all the things to help my channel grow, and that is watching videos all the way to the end, sharing this information with people you know really need to hear it, giving a little like and some love by hitting the subscribe button. You guys have a great day. I'm gonna go enjoy this delicious, healthy salad.